Hello, everyone. My name is Joe Barco, and I'm Senior Director of Marketing at Unchained Labs. I'll be your moderator, and thank you for joining us today. We'll have a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. To ask questions, all you have to do is click on the Q&A in the Zoom navigation bar at the top or bottom of your screen and type your question. You can type your question during the presentation, and we'll get to it at the end. When submitting a question, uh, please avoid clicking the anonymous button so we can reach out via email if we can't uh, get to your question in time. We're the only ones who can see your, uh, your question. Uh, so uh, we'll get to as many of them as we can. Now I'd like to introduce Delray Jackson, the Senior Product Manager for Big Tuna at Unchained Labs. Today, Del will walk us through how Big Tuna automates the critical use task of buffer exchange and sample concentration for proteins, AAVs, LMPs, and other biologics. He'll also discuss Big Tuna's capabilities for integrating your limbs, automation, and your overall workflow. Good morning, Del. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate that. Hi, everyone. Yeah, today I'm really excited to talk to you about how you can sandwich automated buffer exchange into your protein, AV, or LNP workflows with Big Tuna. With school starting back up, I've been trying to expand my six year old daughter's sandwich palette. I have to admit, the tuna fish sandwich has not been a big hit with her. When I ask her why, she gives a big shrug, sigh, and says, It's boring which is probably how most of us would describe buffer exchange. So although it might be boring, it's definitely essential and important, especially when you consider the recent advances in gene therapy. There are so many more molecules now that buffer exchange and concentration have become critical for. So whether you're working with nucleic acids, lipid nanoparticles, or LMPs, viral vectors, or AAVs, or proteins, and antibodies, you need to perform buffer exchange and concentration on all of those. So what tools do you and other researchers have at your disposal? Well, I hate to say, but largely the same that have existed for the last few decades. And keep in mind, we're largely developed for protein as well. Something all of these techniques have in common, whether they have advantages, is that they are labor intensive, which is a big drawback. And so if you look at something like dialysis, which you need to set up, can also be fairly slow to get your results with. Then you have centrifugation filtration using something like an amicon. Can be fast, but your protein or sample recovery can suffer because of clogged membranes. And TFF can be quite complicated sometimes to really optimize it to your biomolecule of interest. And then you need a lot of it, typically more than 100 mils to do that. And the other thing that all of these manual methods have in common is that they're difficult to scale up. So what if there was an automated solution for all the gene therapy biomolecule samples that you need to process? And on top of it, what if it scaled well? Well, that is the big tuna. The big tuna can handle all of these biomolecules and can perform both buffer exchange and concentration and doing it with greater than 96 samples in parallel and without sacrificing ease of use can set these this up pretty quickly so i'd like to take a few minutes spend the next few minutes with you first off showing the results of how well big tuna does work with all those different biomolecules whether they're nucleic acids or lmps but then also why is it the superior choice for automating buffer exchange and concentration when you need to scale up those number of samples? And finally, something I'm really excited about, but how can you take it to the next level and integrate Big Tuna into your overall workflows? But first off, let's take a look and see how well Big Tuna works with your protein concentration and buffer exchange. And so working with proteins, you know that formulation often involves finding just that perfect set of conditions that's going to work for your storage buffers. And so here we have an example of taking monoclonal antibodies and doing a pH study and seeing which one was optimal for it. And you'll see that the buffer exchange was run over these 12 different uh, samples in 7.1 hours. But I want to impress upon you that that's 7.1 hours of free time. This isn't like a manual method where you need to go back to it. And how well did it, does, did it do? Well, lots of numbers here on the screen. What I want to draw your attention to is that that target final concentration 
was 45.8 megs per mil. And so you can see Big Tuna delivered results right there, as well as a buffer exchange percentage that's right on point. Now, what else does Big Tuna work with? Nucleic acids. So in talking to researchers in gene therapy, we've heard that you need a payload, of course, which means lots of different samples are going to be generated. And researchers need to get those samples into a storage buffer and a working at a working concentration. Well, Big Tuna does both of those for you. And we're going to take a quick look at how well it does with nucleic acids here, needing to, needing to exchange them into nuclease-free water. And these were done in both our unfilter 96 and 24. Those numbers refer to the number of samples you can run in parallel and you have some options. Again, lots of numbers here on the screen, but what's the takeaway? Well, it's that we get good results with our target final uh, concentrations and percentage, uh, percentage of exchange that we were trying to get. That's not a level of control that you're gonna get doing dialysis or centrifugation filtration, but you do with big tuna. Working with AAVs, one of the pain points that we've heard is that you have a large volume, but it's typically very dilute. Your samples come in a very low concentration. Another challenge is that AAVs, they'll run differently in your buffer exchange technique, uh, different than, for instance, a protein might. Well, I'm happy to say that Big Tuna makes this easy on two ways. One is that we already have precepts built into Big Tuna software that let you target your different biomolecules. On top of it, we have a volume reduction application that works. In this example, we needed to take a large volume of AAVs from 48 mils all the way down to 8 mLs. And so the results show that it's not just easy to set up and run and use Big Tuna, but it also delivers good results. Look at the capsid payload after being run. You can show that Big Tuna kept it intact. If you work with LN LNPs, then you know that it's critical that you get them out of the solvent, the buffer that they've been manufactured in, because it's typically harsh, and you need to do that very quickly. And you don't want to do that so fast, though, or in a way that would compromise your sample integrity. And this is a nice demonstration of another feature that Big Tuna gives, which is that it, it's gentle in how it processes both your buffer exchange and your concentration applications. And so not only does it do it fast, but it can give you high sample recovery. So in the case here, these results with LMPs were processed in as fast as 90 minutes. But notice, there was no loss, no significant loss in the percent encapsulation after running it on Big Tuna. So Big Tuna can simplify your sample prep. It can handle essentially any gene therapy biomolecule sample type you throw at it that you have to exchange or concentrate. Protein, DNA, RNA, AVs, or LNPs. And the other nice thing is that it's fast without sacrificing ease of use. 30 minutes usually just to set up and get your runs going, nor does it sacrifice your sample recovery or quality as we saw in that selection of data in the previous slides. We discussed the need for processing lots of samples, and this is usually done in a plate-based format. Now I'd like to discuss with you, why does Big Tuna give superior results compared to automated, other automated buffer exchange techniques like vacuum filtration or centrifuged filter plates? It all starts with our unfilters. Our unfilters come in two styles um, for the number of samples that you might want to run in parallel. So we have an unfilter 96, which works at lower volumes. And if you have to work at higher volumes, up to 8 mLs, you can use the unfilter 24. Both of these come in, in various molecular weight cutoffs using a regenerated cellulose membrane. Uh, and in the end, you get low cost per sample. So unfilters are the first part um, to give you the superior results that you need. The next part is our approach, which is automated pressure-based ultrafiltration and diafiltration. I want to take a moment to walk through um, why this approach is different and superior. And if you'll notice at the top of the slide, 
It starts with measuring the volume in each individual well in an unfilter. And you'll see why in a moment, why this is so critical. So from there, as we go into our buffer exchange cycles, we apply a uniform pressure. And that's the second key is across the entire unfilter, you get the same amount of pressure applied. But the key part, one of the key parts is that in that buffer exchange cycle, it's adaptive because we remeasure the volume of every single individual well. This is to essentially negate the possibility, possibility that you might dry out and lose one of your precious samples. And that's really the, the secrets, if you will, to how Big Tuna gives you these superior high throughput results. So each cycle is adaptive, it measures the volume, and it makes sure that you're not gonna lose your precious sample. This isn't something you're gonna get in vacuum filtration where the risk of blowing out a single well is very real. So along with individual volume tracking, uniform pressure, and gentle mixing, Big Tuna delivers these superior uniform results. So the problem that you see demonstrated on the left, dead, dead end ultra filtration, is a common problem where you can aggregate, especially proteins, or get a lot of, of them clumping up at that membrane interface. And this really hits your sample recovery. With Big Tuna, using a gentle orbital mixing that's programmable or part of those presets that I mentioned for your biomolecule of interest, you get, you avoid clogging, delivering higher sample recovery, but also it's a way to get faster exchanges done, which is critical as we discussed for something like LMPs. Again, this, these aren't um, things that you would get with other techniques like vacuum filtration or centrifuged filter plates. And the results speak for themselves. What you see here is shown the amount of recovery across various wells on the left in a big tuna unfilter compared on the right to a centrifuge filter plate. And it's beautiful. All that purple on the big tuna unfilter shows that because of those things, that individual volume measuring, that uniform pressure, as well as that gentle mixing, we get uniform recovery across all of the wells of an unfilter, as opposed to centrifuging a filter plate where you're gonna have uneven force typically in the middle of the plate that's gonna push or process samples at a faster rate, giving you inconsistent results. Not so with Big Tuna. And unlike centrifugation or dialysis methods, these manual methods, Big Tuna gives you precise control over your buffer exchange parameters. And you can program these ahead of time. So whether it's your percent removal that you want, your percent exchange or the final concentration, you can program that into Big Tuna and, and have those results delivered to you. This is so nice because it gives you that individual control without sacrificing the efficiencies you get by scaling up. So imagine a Big Tuna in your lab. Really, everyone can program this. And I say this as also a software engineer. Big Tuna software is tailored for going buffer exchange and concentration, and it makes it so simple that it works more like a wizard format for you to step through and easily select the application you want to run and your molecule of interest. And when you do that, you get nice presets. And it's so easy to select your samples and your buffers and sort of map them to a plate. And personally, one of the things I really enjoy is also how it relates the progress to you. Not only the overall progress, but each filter cycle as well, you can get those details. So unlike other manual methods, you know exactly when your buffer exchange and concentration will finish. And also a really cool thing you can see on the slide there is that each individual well will give you feedback uh, as, as well. So it's great to set up your runs, but what's important? Well, it's the results, right? And another cool thing about Big Tuna is that those results, the reports, in other words, are done in a context format. It's a buffer exchange and concentration platform. So the reports are already tailored for that. And not only does it give you a well by well or a sample by sample rundown of what happened in that experiment, it also records so you can maintain consistency the exact conditions that experiment was run under. These aren't the kind of reports uh, you would get from a manual technique for sure. So buffer exchange and concentration of gene therapy biomolecule samples is never done in isolation, right? Whether you work 
in discovery, development, manufacturing, there are downstream and upstream processes that depend upon it. So what other features exist for Big Tuna that helps you integrate it beyond just being a superior standalone platform? Well, first off, it has easy sample tracking. You know, if you're doing, if you are doing buffer exchange, you're usually getting your samples from someone or somewhere else, processing them, and then you're sending them off to someone or somewhere else. Big Tuna makes this really easy with straightforward sample and buffer lists that can be taken from CSV into text format. So you can import that directly into Big Tuna. It makes it just a lot faster to set up your runs. And then when you're done with those runs, again, the data, the results are critical and it's straightforward how that, those reports are exported in either PDF or text-based format. And you can take that data and you know, easily transfer it into other software. But what if you wanna supercharge this? What if you wanna go above and beyond this level of integration? Well, I'm super stoked to announce that we have an API for Big Tuna now that takes you to the next level for automating things that you wanna do. It's just been released and APIs are the glue between software. And so this Big Tuna API or Big Tuna glue is written to a known lab automation standard referred to as CELA2. And why is that important? That gives you, it makes it quicker and easier, I would say, for you to integrate Big Tuna into other software. And everything that you need to do, as you can see on the slide there, uh, the commands are exposed in a standard format so that you can run it programmatically through the software. And it lets you things to do things like remotely checking status, starting and unloading experiments and handling dialog boxes. So integrating Big Tuna into your overall lab process, workflows or automation is even easier. The sample and buffer list can be automatically taken from your limbs and import it into Big Tuna. Big Tuna software itself, again, makes it so easy to set up your buffer exchange and concentration protocols experiments with those preset values and also validates them for you. And if you wanna have physical integration, robotic integration into Big Tuna, that's possible and straightforward because all that needs to be done is to deliver your samples in the unfilters to and from the Big Tuna. So Big Tuna scales very well. Uh, we saw that as a standalone solution, easy to set up presets for all the gene therapy biomolecule samples you might need to run. And it's really built for high throughput and I would say is the superior solution for doing high throughput buffer exchange and concentration. And finally, if you wanna integrate it into your overall lab workflows, our new API makes it that much easier to do, connect it directly to your limbs and have that remote control and monitoring. So unlike my daughter, I personally enjoy tuna sandwiches, but especially when I can enjoy them in a larger meal. And I think you too will come to enjoy buffer exchange more when you see how easy it is to not only scale it, but also integrate it into your overall workflows with Big Tuna. And so thank you for your attention. And with, with that, we'll entertain your questions. Hand it off to you, Joe. Thanks, Del. Thank you for walking us through Big Tuna and for showing us a way that people can scale up their buffer exchange and sample concentration over manual methods. We have a lot of great questions that have been already submitted. Uh, as a reminder to the audience, you can still submit uh, a question by entering it into the Q&A section of the Zoom navigation bar. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, a few things that came in about uh, related to the integration. So first is, do you need special software or access to the big, uh, to access the Big Tuna API? Nope, no special software. So that's one of the great things about having a standard is, I'm not gonna try to recite the details right now, but the CELA2 standard, lots of documentation online, makes it pretty straightforward and simple. It's almost like if you want to think about it as talking from like to another web page. Okay. And then uh, for, into, for the sample import list, do you need, uh, can the sample buffer list be generated from the, uh, an Excel or a CSV file? It definitely can. The actual file that is imported into Big Tuna is a text file, but CSV files very easily can be transformed into that. Yeah. Okay. And then a question about can you integrate the Big Tuna to an incubator and just feed plates to it? Uh, as an automation guy, I love that question. Yes, you definitely can. It would it's perfectly suited for that. So you can just set it up and let it run, you know, as long as you want. Okay. Uh, thanks. And then uh, couple questions maybe on smaller on, on uh, let's see 
Uh, how about can you use a partial unfilter? Yes, you can. Okay. Uh, software lets you do that fairly easily. I think one time point you showed the map um, in, in part of it, and it's all click and drag. And so you can just uh, choose what wells you, you want. Um, and then a uh, question on um, minimum, a couple questions on minimum volumes for, for buffer exchange and, and sample concentration. Let's repeat that again. What are the what are the minimum volumes for buffer exchange and sample concentration? The minimum volume is it depends upon the plate that you're using. And so if you're talking about the unfilter um, 96, you can go down or the maximum volume is 450 microliters. And the minimum volume required is the same for the unfiltered 24. And I'm sorry, I totally fumbled the answer. The minimum volume for the unfiltered 96 would be 100 microliters. And then the minimum for what from filter 24 is uh, 450, just like yeah. the upper limit of the of the 96 whole thing. Okay. And then what changes are, are done on the system for different sample types? So I think on a couple slides you had uh, this preset was used, so maybe you can clarify what, what that meant. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's basically the pressure that you can have. So 15, 15 PSI, 30 PSI. Um, or the percent removal that you're targeting. And again, all of those are preset for any of the biomolecules that you that we discussed today, but also you as an end user can go back in and create your own experiments pretty easily. Okay. And then uh, how many, uh, there's a couple questions related to uh, during the run. So you have samples that run at different rates uh, when you're doing doing buffer exchange. And so how, like, how does Big Tuna handle and address samples with different viscosities? Um, if the volumes are different in between individual cycles. Right. So obviously, you know, sample recovery is critical. And the way that we address that with Big Tuna is that we sort of play to the one that runs the fastest. So if you have a well that's running really fast, we're going to optimize to that. Now, what that can do is give you a longer overall exchange cycle, but it's going to guarantee that we minimize or eliminate losing any of your, your sample. And you can mitigate this a lot of times by starting at the same concentration and volumes, because then you're most likely, you know, going to get all of your wells to run uniformly. Right. Yeah. There's only so much you can control for that. If my recollection on that first data set you showed, which was the pH optimization, uh, it said seven hours to run, but I recall that it was something like 20 of the wells were done uh, at four hours, and then there was just a couple others that. The pH just made the sample, the sample interacted differently and they just ran slower. And so overall it took seven hours, but most of those things were done a uh, much shorter time. And that's because Big Tuna adapts uh, its pressurization time to, uh, to make sure that those fast running wells, as you said, do not uh, dry out. Exactly. Okay. And then can Big Tuna, can you clarify a couple of things about uh, sample types? So does Big Tuna work with mRNA? I think you showed cDNA earlier. Yes, mRNA, and so we didn't put all the biomolecules up there. We have results and data for it, but mRNA, lentivirus, and VLPs. Okay. And then how many buffers can be used in parallel? Uh, as, as many, I guess, as you can fit on the deck. Um, that's one I'll refer back to you, Joe, to make sure I get it right. Yeah, you're, no, you're right. So you can exchange uh, it's 96 well plate, right? So you can exchange 96 buffers into 96 different formulations. So you can do every sort of flexible, well, everything in between. So one buffer in 96, 96 buffers in 96 proteins, and, and anything in between. So that's kind of the beauty of the way the software is set up is that it tells you what reservoir and how to set everything up, uh, depending on what, uh, what you want to do. Uh, and can you clarify, uh, plate materials are, are low binding protein. Uh, what, what's the plate material made out of? Talked about the membrane, but. Uh, I don't know the exact material, um, but we haven't, we haven't had any complaints about re protein retention if that's what you're worried about. Yeah, yeah it's polycarb, right? So, and yeah, we have very high recovery uh, on that. And then can you clarify, uh, does Big Tuna measure the concentrations on the plate? measure the concentrations on the plate yes each individual well it will measure no it doesn't sorry concentrations it doesn't measure the concentration so we do require to know what your starting concentration is and then as we measure volume that's how we make the calculation for what the final concentration would be 
Uh, and then this question is related a little bit to, uh, I guess, the different the different flow rates, right? Which is, can the program be paused uh, to retrieve samples that are already exchanged? Yes, and that's a, that's a powerful feature. I probably should have mentioned it, but yeah, if you want to get around what you were just mentioning in that MAB example of having a longer runtime, you can now pause. Um, if you have like individual wells that are running fast on Big Tuna, pause it, remove those samples, let the software know, and then you'll have a faster overall runtime. Okay. I'm going to go back to the last question because it's probably important we clarify something about the volume, which is so Big Tuna measures the volume and extrapolates what it believes the concentration is. When we present concentration data on this, usually it's because we run it on a stunner or a lunatic uh, to confirm uh, the actual concentration that's recovered from the plate. Um, okay. I've Few few more questions. Uh, one is how is can you talk a little more about how percent exchange is determined? How percent exchange is determined? Um, it's determined by the so we know how much the starting volume is, and then each time because we measure the volume of every well for every filtration cycle, we know how much is coming out, and so you can we have a target goal in mind. And then basically just calculating it each time how much of the original buffer do we use and that percent exchange is how much uh, is you're basically replacing with new buffer but everything is done as joe just clarified on big tuna because of the volume measurements we have uh, two more questions uh one is a good, good tail on off of the last one, which is about can you use the ultrasonic volume measurement capability as a function? Is it just as a function of the buffer exchange process, or can you use it, you, you use it standalone? We have that same functionality on other platforms. So if you're familiar with our automation line, of which we both have the big kahuna and the junior, that same tool, that acoustic sensor, is available as an option there. Okay, thanks. And then last question uh, is it possible to demo Big Tuna? It sure is, and I'm sure we'll reach out to everybody who took the time to join the webinar today to give you a, a special invite to do just that with you. Okay, uh, with that, uh, Greg Dell, thanks for answering these questions, and thanks for a great presentation. That was fun. Thank you, Joe. Sure. See everyone else later. Bye. For our audience, I also want to thank you for joining us live today. And if you have a specific conversation you'd like to have with us about your buffer exchange process and needs, please do get in touch with us at info at unchainlabs.com or visit the website www.unchainlabs.com. Thank you again for attending our virtual seminar and I hope you have a great rest of your day.